All right. Good morning, love streamers. Welcome to Central Coast Center for Spiritual Living Sunday Celebration Service Love Stream for Sunday, August 1st, 2021. My name is Travis Hogue, and I will be your host pushing buttons in the background. We're so happy you're here. Uh, we have a great service plan today. Our beloved Reverend Elizabeth is with us delivering an uplifting and inspired talk on the topic of time for a tune-up. And she will be joining us shortly, as well as Charlie Carlin, with a Science of Mind reading. Our outreach licensed practitioner, Jeff Tucker, will get us grounded in the moment with prayer very shortly. And our musical inspiration today, Raising the Vibe, is Jamie Lula. So I would invite you to share this love stream with your family and friends. Perhaps start a watch party if you're watching on Facebook. We're also streaming on YouTube. A big hello to you watching on YouTube or watching the replay in the future. Uh, be sure to leave comments if you're able. Let us know where in the world you are watching from. This is great. Uh, so let us light the way with inspired music by the amazing Jamie Lula. He's going to be singing his song, Love is My Religion. Come on, Jamie. I wish you peace. I wish you joy. I wish you love, 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 love. I wish you faith in yourself to reveal all that you've come here to be. Love is my choice. Love is my decision. Love is my voice. Love is my religion. Love is my religion. Uh, uh, uh. I wish you strength I wish you courage Wish you love I wish you purpose To create all your dreams And co-conspire with the light of your life love is my choice love is my decision love is my voice love is my religion love is my religion oh Hey, your answers to eternity are always deep inside you. That freedom of expression is yours to choose right now. Love is my choice. Love is my decision. Love is my voice. Love is my religion. Oh, 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 love is my choice. Love is my decision. Sang, love is my religion. Love is love is my religion. Love is oh. oh, oh. Love 
Love is my religion. Love is, oh, love is. Love is, it's just, it just, it just is. Peace and blessings, y'all. Thank you so much. I love your community. I love your minister. I love her husband. It's a love fest going on in your house community. Stay strong. Stay inspired. Peace and blessings. Oh, wow. Love is my religion. What a perfect song to begin our day. Thank you, Jamie Lula. We love you, my friend. Hello, beloveds. Good morning. I'm Reverend Elizabeth Raleigh Hogue. If you're tuning in for the first time, I'm the spiritual director and senior minister at the Central Coast Center for Spiritual Living. And I would like to welcome you to our community where all that we ask is that you remain open to the possibility of changing your entire life by changing your mind. This service has been designed especially for you. Welcome home. We have an affirmation that is going to be printed on the screen here, and I invite you to please repeat after me. Today, I realign myself with spiritual truth. Today, I realign myself with spiritual truth. I am teachable. I am teachable. And so it is. And so it is. Wonderful. And now Travis is going to say a little bit about uh, Jamie Lula, our amazing musician for the day. Thank you. All right. I'm going to put on my music director hat. My name is Travis, and I'm the music director here at our Central Coast Center for Spiritual Living. And it is my honor to read a little bit about Jamie Lula. So when we're talking about Jamie Lula, we're talking about soul music, inspired music. With more than six albums to Jamie's name, we're blessed to enjoy and be lifted by Jamie's spirit and sound. Classic CDs like Spirit in the House, there's a healing going on. Something's calling me. Alive. Compassion. Naked. And 2019's release called Orange. And uh, so Jamie has been with us uh, at our Central Coast Center for, I, I believe this is going to be his 10th appearance. And um, so... Uh, he's raised the roof that day uh, on August 11th. He played for us uh, with his powerful music. And today he returns for his 10th appearance at our Central Coast Center for Spiritual Living. It is my honor and great pleasure to introduce to you the amazing Jamie Lula with one of my favorite songs, Something's Calling Me. Something's calling me. Something's calling me Something's calling me A little bit deeper than I've ever been before Feels like I'm walking on marbles Can't still the earth beneath my feet is my head in the clouds my naked legs left dangling i can feel my heart begin to pound something's calling me a little bit deeper than i've ever been before something's calling me a little bit deeper than I've ever been before. A long dark night, my soul, it wanders. Can't see the light that moves me. If God is everything and everywhere, then I belong. Spirit gently weak. 
takes me from my sleep Something's calling me A little bit deeper than I'd ever been before Something's calling me A little bit deeper than I've ever been before Oh Lord Oh Lord Take me deeper than I've ever been before Oh Lord Oh Lord Pull me deeper than I've ever been before Oh, oh Lord I know I'm not the only one to Live inside these blues oh, oh, oh Lord Oh Lord I give my life I give my love to you Oh, oh, oh Lord Oh Lord I surrender my life to you Love is calling me A little bit deeper than I've ever been I've ever been, I've ever been before oh, 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 oh. Change is calling me A little bit deeper than I've ever been, I've ever been before faith is calling me a little bit deeper than I've ever been before peace is calling me a little bit deeper than I've ever been I've ever been before mistakes are calling me a little bit deeper than I've ever been before. God is calling me, and I'm grateful like I've never been before. What's calling you today? Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much, Jamie. Wow. What a powerful rendition. Holy smokes. All right. I'm back with the announcements, Angel Hat. Uh, I will do our announcements. And I will say to you, good morning, CSL. That's right. I am your announcements, Angel, for today, August 1st, 2021. And we celebrate birthdays. On this day. So, for all of you August birthdays, will you please stand up and let our brother from another mother sing you a little birthday song? Here you go. All right. All you birthdays, sound off in the comments too if you have a birthday that you know of in August. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. You are wonderful. 
<laughs> Happy birthday, everybody. Peace and blessings. Woohoo! All right. Thank you, Jamie. Happy birthday. Whoa, it's great. So we have Mama Linda's got a birthday coming up on the third, Mary Lee Clemens on the fourth, Sister Joan Berg on the 16th. And Reverend Diane says, happy birthday to all the August birthdays. All right. All right. We're going to uh, continue with the shortened announcements. So we did birthdays. Woohoo! All right. And we have coffee and conversation after the service at 11 a.m. ish via Zoom. Uh, and uh, I'll put the link in the comment section. And... Join us on Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Pacific time for our spiritual community connection calls. And you can find the link for that on our Facebook page under events. Next Sunday, we are meeting in person at our center in Templeton, California and live streaming. We have the incredible Gary Lynn Floyd returning in person to provide the musical inspiration. All right. Now. Our next in-person hybrid gatherings is Sunday, August 8th, in person and online, as I mentioned, with Gary Lynn Floyd in person. We're going to have some fun, fun, fun. Look at that picture. Fun, fun, fun. Uh, so the, the note for everyone else is the rest of the services for this month of August will be held online only here, right here on Facebook Live and YouTube. All right. And... If you like what we're up to, please consider making a donation to support the vision of our center. We have lots of expenses for reopening and could really use your help. And uh, if you wouldn't mind, take a moment to share this service on Facebook. Uh, spread the word with, uh, about our amazing center and what we're up to. And that, my beloveds, has been the announcements. <laughs> Wonderful, Travis. Thank you so much. What a blessing it is to have you wearing so many hats for us today. We love you. Let's give some love to Travis, everybody. Woo, Travis, feel the love. All right, my friends, in this moment, I would like to remind you that if there is something weighing heavy on your heart for which you would like prayer for, or maybe you're looking to manifest something in your life, we invite you to please send your prayer requests to us at info at cccsl.org and our prayer team will pray over them for you for the next week. And now it is my great joy to turn it over to our beloved Charlie Carlin for our Science of Mind reading for today. Take it away, Charlie. Good morning, everyone. Another beautiful day here in the Tascadero. It's time for a tune-up, so let's review the basics. Let's review these three ideas first from Dr. Ernest Holmes. First, we have a right to choose what we shall induce in mind, from the Science of Mind on page 144. Second, we all use the creative power of the universal mind every time we use our own mind. That's from the Science of Mind on page 30. And third, we should expect the best and live so that the best may become a part of our experience from the science of mind on page 300. If one was to state the essence of the teachings of the science of mind, it would be that the highest God and the innermost God is the one God. The core of each human being is the original creative genius of the universe. We are therefore the focus of God's stuff on earth. Consciously or unconsciously, we direct the flow of the universal mind into form. In other words, the cosmic engine is started, but man guides it in his life. This grants us tremendous power with the responsibility to make or break our world through the extraordinary workings of the powers of our mind. Thus, practical emphasis of the science of mind text is in schooling for all in the power of trained thought. Consider that much of our ordinary thinking lapses into habitual patterns with little variation from one day to the next. Our lives mirror this and fall into serial monotony 
interrupted by episodes of trouble, panic, and loss. We live then in a limited, crippled version of who we are and what we are, suffering the continuance of emotional plagues and toxic thoughts. And the world reflects this so tragically. In contrast, the science of mind works by renewing our minds, and not just our minds, but our bodies and our soul as well. We must agree to attune and orchestrate our thoughts and emotions toward higher purposes and creative ends. In this, we have help, for spirit assures us that the lure of becoming is always calling, as is the incendiary version of that what we may be. We are limited only by concept and the refusal that comes from ignorance or laziness to reluctance to change our thinking. Science of mind gives us a passion for a new possibility along with precise and clear direction for building a set of new thoughts and greater manifestation. It shows us how to activate the constructive imagination and how to hold in thought and feeling the intention and energy for healing, for making life whole, for co-creating a beautiful world, and more. It shows us how to stop boring God by waking up to the fact that we are here in God's school to learn the principles of world making, the evolving of the self, the making of a better society to a higher level. And so it is. Oh, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am so grateful to be in this day as we come together in a celebration. Something's calling me. Love is calling me deeper than I've ever been before. Wow. I couldn't have been more touched by that in this moment today, knowing that we are here in love, that we come together as a community, we come together to celebrate in the language of spirit, in the feeling of spirit, in the creativity of spirit, in knowing in this way, our community is a symbol of the entire universe, that we are part of one thing, something bigger than ourselves, something that touches each and every one of us in a way that we get to explore and dabble in and study in and dive deeper into every single day. And as we get every new morsel from it, we are stronger. We get to present ourselves in the best possible way as spirit intended us to be when this first creation was put in place. And I know that each and every one of us has the resource deep within us, the one, and that it comes in us, through us, and from us. And that in this network of support, this thing we call community, on this day we call a celebration, I am grateful. I am grateful for what the divine has placed within each and every one of us. I am grateful for the divine that is each and every one of us. And I know that our perfection, our glory, our peace, our contribution, and everything about us is perfection. And I know that we contribute in the greatest of ways to each and every person, to each and everything, and to everything that is possible, whether we even know what it is, so I say thank you. I am so grateful for this day. I'm so grateful for the language that we are in. And I am so grateful for everything we get to create together. And I say, let us be our most peaceful, joyful, best selves in this knowledge. I release this word and say thank you. And so it is. And so it is. Thank you, Jeff. Beautiful. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Charlie, for your science of mind reading. And now I'm going to bring Jamie Lula back in, and he's going to do a song called Light of the World. And you might just need to hear these lyrics right now. I know I do. Da, 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 da. Na 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 na
Na na na na na, you're not bad. You're not selfish. You're not ugly. You're not broken, damaged, or dysfunctional. No, no. You're not the things you tell yourself you are. Not the opinions of others or old scars, because you are the light of the world. Yes, you are. You are the light of the world. Oh, yes, you are. Make a joyful noise unto the spirit of your life. Make a joyful noise unto the spirit of your life. And all the children sang, na 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 na. Words are simple, na 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 na. You're not stupid, lazy. You're not fat. Or too thin. You're not a big mouth. A crybaby. You're not a bully or original sin. You're not the things you tell yourself you are. Not the opinions of others or old scars. Because. You are the light of the world, or you can sing it. You are the light of the world. Oh, 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 oh. Come on now, make a joyful noise unto the spirit of your life. Make a joyful noise unto the spirit of your life. Make a joyful noise unto the spirit of your life. Make a joyful noise unto the spirit. Cause I'm gonna love you, make my heart your home. And I gonna love you when you feel alone and I'm gonna love you when your blues creep in and I'm gonna love you until the all over again because you are the light come on y'all of the world oh yes you are you are the light of the world make a joyful make a joyful noise unto the spirit of your life Make a joyful noise unto the spirit of your life. Make a joyful noise unto the spirit of your life. Make a joyful noise unto the spirit. Unto God's spirit. As your life. Be the light, see the light, express the light, reveal the light, and everything that has to do with the light, because you are the light of the world. Peace. All right, there we are. <laughs> wow, you are the light of the world. Oh my goodness, Jamie Lula bringing it home for us. What a blessing. 
We're so, so grateful to have Jamie with us again, are we not? Hello, friends. If you're just tuning in, I'm Reverend Elizabeth Raleigh Hogue, and I'm the spiritual director and the senior minister at the Central Coast Center for Spiritual Living, located in Templeton, California. And we're broadcasting to you live this morning from San Luis Obispo, California, from our condo. I'm upstairs and Travis is downstairs. And so <laughs> we're very grateful to be here with you. And you are the light of the world. Wow. I just love and adore Jamie's music so much. You know, when I first got into the science of mind uh, teaching back in, gosh, 2004, and I found the Center for Spiritual Living San Jose and some friends uh, knew about Jamie Lula and he came to do the music there. And of course, I had to get his CDs. I think he had like two or three at the time and they were so powerful. And we would listen to these songs and sing them. We'd go on road trips and have them just the CDs playing continuously, trying to harmonize. And well, I thought I got it, but you probably wouldn't want to hear it. <laughs> but anyway, it's like you sing this beautiful music over to yourself over and over again, and then something occurs, right? Something on a cellular level for us occurs. Like It's like a remembering of who we really are. And isn't that what today's talk is all about? So in August, our theme for this month is A Pause for Guidance, and the talk title for today is Time for a Tune-Up. Is it time for a tune-up? So for this month of August, we are pausing for guidance. What does that mean? That means pausing for rest and rejuvenation, pausing for the preparation for the next leg of our journey. We welcome joy, innovation, authenticity, vulnerability, and the opportunity to evolve our thinking. Yes? And so I love to say uh, we pause for the cause. And so that is first cause with a capital F and a capital C, but we're pausing for the cause. And so we can get real busy in our lives, can we not? Especially with the way that the world is transforming and everything is constantly changing, you know, mask, no mask, COVID's here, COVID's gone, Delta, on and on, right? We are called to really pause for the cause. And that is to stop and turn our attention inward and check in with ourselves. What do we feel? What is my truth? What is the truth that spirit is bringing forward into consciousness here and now and out into the world, you know, um, and turning down everything else and tuning in to KGOD. And that is one of my favorite things, as we all know, because <laughs> it's all spirit all the time, commercial free with everyone's favorite DJ, God. Yay, God. All right. So it's time for a personal tune up for us to ensure that we are aligned with our life values so that we may continue along our path whole and with joy. We consider this month being in alignment with our personal values of spirituality, relationships, time, and health. What does that mean? Well, you know, am I going along the path that is for my highest and greatest good? And, you know, it's like, be careful where you're headed. You just might get there. And so it's our call to stop, to pause, to check in and connect with what are my values? Am I spending my time where I would like to be spending my time for the greatest unfoldment of my greatest good, my greater yet to be? And so Ernest Holmes says, you are to find the roots of your life in pure spirit. Lose your sense of being separated from your good and you will find that you are united with it. I love that. So there's not often talk about losing something, right? But 
lose that sense of being separated from your good. That means there is good for me and I ought to have it. And the good is not out there when I lose weight or when I gain weight or when I'm this or last year or I miss my opportunity. There is good for us and we ought to have it here and now in this moment now because our good is already here. But are you paying attention to your good? Are you looking for your good? Are you pausing to count the many ways the good is appearing in your life? Or are you focusing on the things that you don't like and don't want and problems and troubles and all of that? And the invitation for us is to stop and check in with our highest self and connect with that place within us and consider, is this what I want to create in my life? Knowing that, yes, there is a power for good in the universe that is greater than we are and we can use it, but will we use it? I think the answer is yes. And I'm so grateful to be in this community where that answer is yes. It's a resounding yes. Say it with me. Yes. Say it again. Yes. One more time. Yes. All right. I can hear Travis downstairs saying yes. <laughs> That's so awesome. All right. And so <laughs> stop thinking that your good is not here now and you'll begin to receive it. That is really what that quote means. Stop thinking that it's not already here. And as you do, you'll begin to see and have the revelation of your good in your life. And who doesn't want that, right? Who doesn't want that? So the first opportunity for us to have our tune up is to look at getting support. Now, if we want to grow, we must take time for a regular spiritual tune up. When we tune up our cars, our engine becomes easier to start. Our fuel economy is improved. Emissions are lowered. It restores the lost pep and power that may be occurring and it improves engine performance. Wouldn't you like to start your day more easily, improve how much energy you feel, lower the negative experiences in your life and restore your pep and power and improve your performance? Can I get an amen? And then and so it is. <laughs> it's like, yes, who wouldn't want that? It's time for a tune up. Or when we go for a chiropractic adjustment, it tunes up and aligns our spine, right? Sometimes we get a little uh, out of place and, and then we start walking a little awkward and, and then it creates more problems in the rest of our bodies. So uh, wouldn't you like to realign with the infinite? It's time, my friends. When we go to the dentist, it improves the health of our teeth and uh, we we are here to experience increased vitality. I'm ready for that. How about you all? Are you ready for all of that good that comes from being in alignment with spirit all the time? Yes. I'm seeing yeses over here in the comments. So thank you. <laughs> now, what we are called to do is get regular prayer or have a practice of prayer. So if you are uh, in the mix and you're getting comfortable and used to doing your spiritual mind treatment, which is our form of affirmative prayer, then you are doing these treatments on your own uh, and learning your way to be in communion with the divine, which is what that is all about, and affirming your good and claiming and naming and claiming your good. Uh, so you make sure that you're doing your prayers and then you can get prayers from others. You can call myself. You can reach out to Reverend Diane Davison. Uh, we've got Jeffrey Tucker and, uh, and you can also send email to info at cccsl.org. You can schedule a spiritual counseling session with me or just a prayer time. I love to pray in case you didn't notice. I am always available for prayer. I don't care how busy I am stopping and realigning with truth is the name of the game for me, right? This is how I stay balanced. And so please never think that we are too busy. That's what we're here for. 
So uh, one way that you can get your spiritual tune-up going is through contacting one of us for prayer. And then uh, that's really going to aid in increasing our spiritual energy, our alignment with ultimate truth, and the essence of who and what we are. I enjoy praying because whenever I pray with others, it is in my consciousness. And so prayer is powerful as you know. So the second opportunity is evaluate where you would like improvement in your life and be teachable in those areas. Be teachable. So someone who is teachable looks at others' opinions as valuable learning tools, not as a looming possibility of being wrong or bad. They then take action and make changes where needed. And so being teachable also means being humble. Being humble, my friends, creates an inner freedom from having to protect those parts that we try to hide from ourselves and others. I'm not talking about being meek or playing small. This is about understanding that your way might not be the best way or there may be another way. Imagine that. In other words, we develop a quiet understanding and compassionate heart in being humble. When you're teachable, you listen to the input from others around you and continually use it to improve yourself. When you're not teachable, you disregard the input from others and then oftentimes will isolate yourself possibly inserting a false platitude like, what you think of me is none of my business. I love that Terry Cole Whitaker book as much as anyone else. What you think of me is none of my business. That book doesn't even need to be read because the title says it all, does it not? (laughs) What you think of me is none of my business. That statement actually means don't give away your power and allow others to dictate how you feel about yourself. It doesn't mean give away your self-esteem, right? You are owning your self-esteem and from a place of power and spiritual authority, you can go, oh, that's a place that I can fine tune. Not shame yourself, not blame yourself or beat yourself up for making a mistake or not being the whole, uh, uh, the whole uh, presence that you came here to be. We fall down. We're humans. That's the beauty of being human. And we're called to honor ourselves, you know? And so, um, so that statement, what you think of me is none of my business. It really means, as I said, that we're not going to allow what others think to dictate how we feel about ourselves, right? We're going to use it as a valuable input to consider and process within our own being. Is this something that I could improve upon or would like to improve upon? Yes, then you go forward. No, and then you don't. You, you go about your own way, right? Whatever it is for you. But I have to tell you that if you're in a committed relationship, if you're married, even if you have friends and jobs, you realize that actually, yes, what other people think of us actually matters to some degree. It actually is our business, right? So it's enlightening to understand how we land in the eyes of others, how others experience us. Because that says a lot about the way that we're moving through the world. Now, has anyone ever been unteachable? (laughs) I know I've been unteachable where it's like rigid, you know, like it's this way. uh, You've got tunnel vision. It's my way or the highway. I know you don't know. They don't know. I know what's going on. That is being unteachable. And it's when you're only allowing for X or Y to occur, X or Y. So it's either X or Y. Everything that happens in your life goes to X or Y. But the issue with that is that there are 24 other letters in the alphabet. 
there's a lot of gray area and there is a lot of unknown and where and what is the unknown the unknown is where infinite possibility and unlimited potentiality exist pure spirit right in that unknown and so we've got to be teachable now i've seen the unteachable come and go they're set in their ways and they don't want to hear it right they just don't want to hear it they participate to such a degree until their ego feels threatened by opportunities for growth and then they come up with an excuse to disappear themselves they're out of here, gone, right? And then they make themselves invisible and uh, and then they start shaming themselves uh, in their own privacy. But it comes out to such a degree that uh, there is some sort of shame happening and they actually feel like they need to take themselves out of the game. Well, guess what? We don't do shame here. There is no shame in our game. We are not about shame. We are human beings having a human experience, spiritual beings having a human experience, right? And so things are happening. Things are constantly happening. And so the call, the high, the spiritual high road is to come and and be in the presence of, be available, be here now in the midst of all of it, right? And so that is the true way to move forward in our lives because as we recognize, hey, there's some areas that I'd like to improve upon, uh, that is for us and our own individual experience. And we can still show up and and know that we are loved and adored, not only by spirit, but by each individual in the community. There is so much love here. Shame is not any part of our game. And so when we become uh, invisible or try to disappear ourselves, that's really us uh, wanting to stay in our comfort zone. And we're not growing in our comfort zones. We're just being comfortable in our comfort zones. So there's a time for that comfort. Yes. And if you're on the path of spiritual growth, then there's a time for that growth to occur. Yes. And, uh, and so we've got to be teachable. Are you with me? Can I get in? And so it is. If you're with me, we've got to be teachable. Now, the unteachable love to argue for their limitations. They love it. They aren't interested in new thoughts or new ways of thinking that would liberate them from bondage. Uh, the, my mentor and friend, Dr. David Bruner, used to say, argue for your limitations and they're yours. So what does that sound like? But I can't. I'm to this. I'm to that. It's always been this way. There's no use resigned and cynical you know that feeling right but guess what i'm here to tell you it's not so it is not so you have to be teachable though open to another way there must be another way because spirit has birthed itself into existence on this planet right now for such a time as this for you to glow for you to grow for you to inspire and be the best you that you came here to be and i know we're each up for it so in ministerial school and every leadership training program i've ever participated in it is strongly held that we have our mentors a mentor who uh, it has more experience and a little more knowledge than us, who, who we can learn from and get some guidance from, yes? And then we also want to have a mentee who is someone who we can share our knowledge and guidance with. We teach what we know. It's powerful, and this can be applied to every area in your life, right? Um, so if you want to be a really good bicyclist, for example, you will uh, go, if you're biking just with the bikers who are going five miles per hour, 
then you will be in that group. And then if you practice with people who go a little faster and then you'll lag behind at first, but eventually you'll catch up with them because they've sort of pulled you with them, right? And we as spiritual beings having a human experience are being pulled by spirit pulled into the vision of the highest and best idea of spirits, uh, high, spirits, highest idea of itself as our lives. Yes. Powerful. So we can allow that to pull us or stay in our comfort zone. Now, I know all of you, or most of you, I think, <laughs> there are some watching who I don't know, and there are some people who haven't put their names in the comments. Who are you? We wanna know who's watching, we love you. Hello, YouTube, love you guys too. I saw a few of you, Donna, Lila, and Lisa, yay! Um, it's so great to have you all here with us. And so I wanna share, a story, I'm going to be brief about this one story because I've shared it before, but it's so relevant, right? It is about the flying trapeze and how I did really well. If you recall that story, I, I figured it out. I learned how to do it at first. It was a mess. I was afraid. And then I learned to do it and I was able to get up there and fly through the air with the greatest of ease and have someone on the other side catch me and then they dropped me into the net and I was fine and I still had a little bit of wobbly legs so I did it a couple more times and my form I had perfected my form like I was going fast now and I wasn't afraid I knew what to do when to do it how to do it and I was being guided just like we are in our lives right and I was like yeah Ray, let's do this again. And then I came down off of the net and the instructor said, well, I think it's time for you to learn a new trick. What do you mean? I was like, why? I'm just, I'm so good at this one. It never even occurred to me that there was another trick to learn. I thought this was the name of the game, right? It's the, we're doing this flying trapeze. It's the one thing you get caught and boom. I, it honestly never, ever occurred to me that there were additional tricks that I would be learning. So I, my mind was a little bit blown and, uh, and I had the feeling of, I don't want to learn a new trick. I'm so good at this one. How powerful was that, right? So that recognition of, wow, isn't that how we are in times of change, in times of growth opportunities? But I'm just, I'm so good at this and I don't know uh, what's going to happen in the next stage, in the next trick, right? <laughs> what's my next trick? And so I did the next one and I, and it was hard and I failed and and I you know I had the timing off and my form was bad but then I tried again and tried again and pretty soon bam I had it how beautiful is that so that was a great example of me being teachable now I could have probably said I'm not learning a new trick nope not having it I'm done <laughs> And, uh, and so I am always all about my growth and I know that everything that I'm being called to do and be is all for the great unfoldment of my destiny, right? My spiritual, uh, expansion of good in my life. Yes. And so I say, yes, I say yes. And it always works out. So another story I want to share with you is around, hey, where is this story? Uh, oh, wait, no. Nope. Where did it go? Uh, gardening. I've got a gardening story to share with you. So I was gardening and I was helping out my mom uh, years ago. And we had some gladiolas and I was replanting the gladiolas. And since they were originally planted with dahlias, they all didn't fit in this pot very well. So they needed to be replanted. And so I pulled the three original gladiola bulbs out, 
but that turned out that they each had three to four bulbs connected to them. They had actually multiplied and the darkness had caused this multiplication. And so everything that was needed for this to happen always existed within them and they are whole, perfect and complete unto themselves. But the question for us is what has been waiting within us? What has been waiting within you that is now ready to multiply? Just like those gladiola bulbs, right? Something's calling you deeper than you've ever been before. What keeps calling you? Only you know that answer. And the next story I have to share is, uh, is a beautiful one. So long ago, when the world was very new, there was a certain lobster who was determined that the creator had made a mistake. So he set up an appointment to discuss the matter. With all due respect, said the lobster, I wish to complain about the way you designed my shell. You see, just as I got used to one outer casing, then I have to shed it for another. Very inconvenient and rather a waste of my time. To which the creator replied, I see. But do you realize that it is the giving up of one shell that allows you to grow into another? But I like myself just the way I am, the lobster said. Your mind is made up, the creator asked. Indeed, stated the lobster firmly. Very well, smiled the creator. From now on, your shell will not change, and you may go on about your business just as you do right now. That is very kind of you, said the lobster, and left. At first, the lobster was very content wearing that same old shell, but as time passed, he found that his once light and comfortable shell was becoming quite heavy and tight. After a while, in fact, the shell became so cumbersome that the lobster couldn't feel anything at all outside himself. As a result, he was constantly bumping into others. Finally, it got to the point where he could hardly even breathe. So with great effort, he went back to see the creator. With all due respect, the lobster sighed. Contrary to what you promised, my shell has not remained the same and it keeps shrinking. Not at all, smiled the creator. It has remained the same size. What happened is that you changed inside, within your shell. The creator continued, you see, everything changes continuously. No one remains the same. That's the way I've made things. When you let go of your shell and choose to grow, said the creator, you build new strength within yourself. And in that strength, you'll find new capacity to love yourself, to love those around you, to love life itself. This is my plan for each one. And so it is. How beautiful is that? I just love that story. That is so powerful. So what changes is the in us internally, right? We change on the inside. We change and we transform and then the experiences around us also change and transform because of our inner transformation. And so we are each called to also embrace our humanness. For many, uh, when we fall, when we fail at something, something that's important to us, like a job or a relationship, for example, our self-esteem plummets because we have tied our self-worth to those things. Not so when you have humility. Your ability to withstand perceived failures or criticisms comes from our intrinsic value of being human rather than from outer means. So when you think that you have failed at a task 
or haven't lived up to expectations, it doesn't mean that there is something wrong with you. There is nothing wrong here. In order to grow, we learn. In order to learn, we have to be teachable. And to be teachable, we have to be humble. We love you exactly as you are, and you can't stay that way. Why? Because we live in a progressive universe. The earth is vibrating today at a higher frequency than it ever has before. And so any way that the world was uh, moving and working 10 years ago cannot apply today. And the third thing I wanted to share was to lose that which you don't want and share that thing that you do want. So what that means is we're called to choose to lose unhappiness. And that is letting go, releasing unhappiness, releasing our judgment, releasing that victim mentality that doesn't serve us anymore. Release it, lose it. You can lose it in the same way that you found it. It's like something that got picked up and put on, but you can take it off just like a hat and you can put it somewhere and go back and get it if this new way of being doesn't work out for you. You could even create a ritual and let it go, allowing what you want for yourself and your life to reveal itself within you. To truly find it, though, we must share that which we want more of in our lives. We're so used to sharing uh, different dramas or complaining and talking about our judgments and what doesn't work and why the world is this way. And, but why uh, talking about all of that leads to more of the same. So what we want to do is talk about what we want to experience more of in our lives. If you want more peace, find ways to share peace in the world. If you want more love, find ways to be loving to more people. If you want more friends, be a friend to somebody first. Ralph Waldo Emerson said that the only way to have <clears throat> a friend is to be one. So just like cars need tune-ups, we also need to take time on a regular basis to have a spiritual tune-up. Take this week to reevaluate your life, get support with prayer, sign up for a class, be willing to be humble and teachable, and most of all, be willing to lose those things that don't look good on you. Judgment is not flattering on anyone, and that's self-judgment and judgment of others. So start being that which you want to experience more of in the world because you already have it within you. You already have this within you. Excuse me for a moment. All right. You already have it within you. So with that, my beloveds, let's turn our attention inward for some prayer. And so turning within, once again, we return to that beautiful, expansive space within, which is that space where I know and remember with every fiber of my being, that spirit is all that there is. <clears throat> it's all that there ever was, and it's all that there ever will be. And I'm so grateful in this moment to be connected to this presence of love that is within me here and now. Because as I do, I know that I am pausing for the cause. And as I pause for this first cause, that is really me placing my attention on the thing itself, which is the very same thing that walks through all feet, all of us. All of us are made in the image and likeness of spirit. We are spiritual beings having a human experience and we are connected and directed to it right now and always. And we never are disconnected. Only in our thinking are we disconnected. And so what we are called to do from this moment forward is remember to recalibrate, to refocus, to have that tune up and tune in to spirit, K-G-O-D, all spirit, all the time. That station is judgment-free, shame-free, and it is free from unhappiness. 
It's free from doubt and fear and worry. And we, each one of us has the power within us to tune into that station. And that doesn't mean that fears or doubts or worries don't come up. They may come up, but they don't have that power over us anymore. Shame has no power over me. Judgment has no power over me. Guilt has no power over me. Fear, doubt, worry, none of those have power over me or any one of us and who we came here to be. Because who we came here to be are radiant, magnificent lights of love. What a beautiful gift. I'm so grateful for this. I'm so grateful for Spirit's presence in my life and for each life here. I'm so grateful for the revelation and the transformation that has occurred on this day, just in the last 20 minutes. What a beautiful gift and a blessing it is for us to remember who we are. We are already tuned up by this prayer. We have come into alignment with who and what we are. And so I know that as we go forward into the rest of our day, today and throughout the week, we feel the presence of love. We see the presence of love. We experience the presence of love in our lives in great magnitude, as eternal and vast as the space that spans beyond the myriad universes. And personally, the thing that's loving us, not judging us, loving us exactly as we are, right where we are. And that brings comfort and joy and freedom to be who we came here to be. Hmm. Oh, what a beautiful, beautiful thing this is. I'm so grateful for this and so much more. As I feel waves of appreciation wash over my entire body, I know that all is truly well. All manner of things shall be well. And yes, all is well because we are teachable and tuned in and tuned up. So I release this prayer knowing it is so, and I invite you to help me anchor this truth by saying, and so it is. In my eyes, in my mind, in my heart and soul, in my life, I have been Searching for something, but you were my dream. You're perfect. You're golden. You're light. Your love. You're perfect. You're golden. You're my light. My love, when I breathe, when I swallow, caress I feel, when I listen I hear the most beautiful music out of nowhere. perfect you're golden your light your love you're perfect you're golden you're my light my love when I'm sad and dark shallow and in doubt when I'm trying my best to put one foot in front of the other you're perfect you're golden you're the light of my life 
You're my love from forever in your reflection. I'm perfect. So I'll keep looking at you to keep witnessing my perfection. And you are as me. You're always there. You never leave. You're holding me. You set me free. Your guiding light. Your empathy. Your confidence to express in and as me. Oh, you're perfect. You're golden. You're the light of my life. You're my love from forever. In your reflection, I'm perfect. So I'll keep looking at you to keep witnessing that I'm perfect. I'm golden. You're the light of my life. You're my love from forever. In your reflection, I'm perfect, so I'll keep looking at you to keep witnessing my perfection in you as me. Light, I did, I did, I. Light, I did, I did, Light, I did, I did, I. Come on, y'all. Lie, die, 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 lie, die, 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 lie, die, 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 die. You're perfect, golden light, my love. You're perfect, golden light. My love. Mm. Peace. Blessing you all in your perfection. Oh, so beautiful. You're perfect. You're golden. Hmm. All right, beloveds, it is now time for our gifts, tithes, and offerings. If this service has inspired you in any way, please consider making a donation to our center. And the offering affirmation will be placed on the screen here in a moment. Uh, just to remind you, oh, Travis, if you could throw the um, give button up on the, the, there you go. Now it's on Facebook. All right. And there's PayPal options. Um it is paypal.me forward slash cccsl love, all one word. All right. And now we're ready for the offering affirmation. And I invite you to please repeat after me from the love of pure spirit within me. I bless this gift. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and my belief. It is evidence of my faith and my belief. It does great work in the world. It does great work in the world. And returns to me multiplied abundantly. And it returns to me multiplied abundantly. <laughs> and so it is. And so it is. All right, friends, won't you know with me? waiting for that to disappear. Want to know with me that you are never alone, that God is where you are right now and always, and all that you ever need do is turn within. And it is here you will find you are guided, sustained, directed, and inspired by a source that knows only good. Joyously let us make use of these gifts in all that we think, in all that we say, and in all that we do. And please repeat after me, something wonderful is happening as me right now. Something wonderful is happening as me right now. It is this thing called life. It is this thing called life. Life is in my mind. Life is in my mind. Life is in my body. Life is in my body. Life is in my pocketbook. 
Life is in my pocketbook. Life is in my relationships. Life is in my relationships. Life is everywhere. Life is everywhere. I think it. I think it. I feel it. I feel it. I believe it. I believe it. I express it. I express it. I accept it. I accept it. Just the way that it is. Just the way that it is. And just the way that it is not. And just the way that it is not. Thank you, life. Woo. Thank you, life. life. Woo. All right, everyone. Love uh, you, everyone. Blessings. I'm going I'm to put the coffee and conversation link in the chat, and I hope that uh, you're able to come and visit with us for a little bit, get your spiritual immunity with your community, and uh, and thank you for being here. Thank you for your donations. Thank you for your yeah. love and your support. And you know what? Thank you, Reverend Elizabeth for what a beautiful talk. Please share this today's love stream with people in your orbit that maybe need to hear this message, this beautiful Good message right and this and this music. Jeff, thank you so much for your mm. beautiful opening prayer. Charlie Carlin with your Science of Mind reading. Thank you so much, everybody. We uh, hope to see you in the Zoom meeting. Oh yeah, yeah. and I did, I did put it in there. So okay. thank you. <laughs> thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thank you.